Hi, this is Zach Ibria. In this video in our payment series, we'll focus on security deposits. In this video, I'll specifically be showing you how to add, apply, and return a security deposit. To add a security deposit to a customer's balance, you'll first search for a customer in the search bar. So look up top and type in their first or last name, address, or customer number. I'm going to go ahead and search for Humphrey Bogart with his last name. So now this should pull up the customer screen. And in the customer screen, I want you to look up top here and next to overview, you will want to click the details tab. Now scroll down and scroll to other details. So here you should see the current balance security deposit and the date customer created, customer created by and date canceled. Cool. So here, what you will want to do is look here next to security deposit and click the blue button to add. So if you already had a security deposit, you would have seen a number there and it would have showed how much the security deposit was. But of course, we haven't added anything like that. So from there, this directly takes you into the payments tab. And now we can go ahead and add the security deposit. Cool. So to add the security deposit, here under transaction type, we're going to click the drop down menu and select security deposit. Now underneath that we have payment method. So I'm going to go ahead and choose deposit. And for receipt email, let's just use test at test.com. And any amount, since this is just a tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and put $50. And you might want to put the transaction date if it's a different date. But of course, since I'm just using this as a, a tutorial, I'm just going to be keeping that blank for today. So once that's all filled out, the final thing to do is look down here and click the blue Make Payment button. So I'm going to go ahead and click that now. Cool. So you should see we've added the deposit here. You can see the reference number, deposit added, and the amount. Cool. So next, we will check the Customer Details tab for the Security Deposit Total. So now once you go down, you should see here, Security Deposit, $50. It's great. So now we know that that $50 has been deposited into the uh, customer's account, so we know that's all there. Cool. So this is separate and not credited or debited to the customer's balance. This is just a separate security deposit and it's in a separate bucket altogether. So that's one thing to definitely keep in mind when you're doing this. So of course you've seen we've already put in the security deposit and as I mentioned before, the balance is separate from the, the security deposit. So the balance is different there. Cool. So we will now continue the rest of the steps, such as applying and returning a deposit. So to apply a security deposit, once again, you'll want to go down here and click that to go into the security deposits payments uh, tab. Now select security deposit again from the transaction type menu, but this time for payment method, you'll want to select transfer from that drop down. Once again, I'm going to put in test. And cool. So now let me explain to you what this transfer is. Basically, the transfer from a payment, it's when you're transferring out. So if you're going from one place to another, this um, towards your customer balance, the $20 will roll over. Great. So go ahead and make that payment. Are you proceeding? Okay. So now you can see that $20 has been paid, and you can either manually allocate that how you want, or you can auto allocate that. So that $20 will be taken out of the security deposit and be used towards the customer balance now. You can do that. If, for example, they're moving out, and it's just an easier way for them to really solve the problem instead of giving you money back and then um, giving you the security deposit while you're still paying your customer balance, this allows you to kind of figure that out and they s subtract the customer balance from your security deposit. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Cool. So now you can see the deposit transferred to the account. The $20 from that security deposit has now been transferred into the customer account. So to check all of that, I'm going to go ahead and click details. And now we should see that the numbers here have changed. So as you saw earlier, 
it was a higher number and now the current balance is credited and the security deposit has changed by twenty dollars from fifty to thirty awesome so that's pretty much what happens with transfers and how it gets deducted from your security deposit cool so now the last thing to do is return a security deposit and now to do that it's very similar once again i'm going to go ahead and click that to go back into the payments tab directly and here as far as transaction type i'm going to choose security deposit again but this time we've already done deposit we've done transfer this time i'm going to do return security and go ahead and do test and this time i'm going to return the entire 30 dollars that's remaining and make payment and now you can see the deposit refunded to customer great so you know the customers moved out now they had thirty dollars left over and now that thirty dollars has gone back to the customer so that's basically a really quick return of their security deposit and now i'll just go back to where we began the details page and you can see down here now the security deposit has gone from 30 to zero and it's gone back to the customer. So that's pretty much it. In this video, I've shown you how to add a security deposit, how to apply one, uh, apply a transfer, as well as how to return a security deposit. Thanks for watching. This is Zach Cabria, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like this video, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have lots of other videos and playlists for you, and we're constantly updating our software. So please continue to subscribe to this list as well as all our channels. Have a great day and feel free to reach out to us if you're having any issues. Thanks.